Hi, it's Abdullah. It was nice seeing so many of you enthusiastic about the Nokia XR20 just like I am. However, as always, the Snapdragon 480 steals the show and there are obviously a lot of concerns about Nokia using this chipset on the XR20. Luckily for you, I have a couple of months of experience with this exact same chipset on the Nokia X20 as well as the Nokia X10, which I also reviewed recently. So I'm gonna try and avoid making this too technical, so hopefully it'll be easier to understand for everybody. So the first thing we need to understand is where does the Snapdragon 480 fall in terms of performance inside Qualcomm's own lineup of chipsets. One thing to note here is that when it comes to benchmarks, the CPU isn't the only factor that the benchmark takes into consideration. So there's obviously also the memory speed performance as well as the graphical performance by the GPU. So in terms of numbers, the Snapdragon 480 on the X20 and the X10 sits comfortably within the 720 and the 732G Snapdragon processors, which is also a step below the Snapdragon 750G. Now, when it comes to real world usage, I really didn't feel much of a difference in terms of speed compared to the Nokia 8.3, which has a more capable chipset. Now, the only thing that I've noticed is that the X20, which has the same chipset as the XR20, is a bit slower when it comes to opening games compared to the 8.3. However, when it comes to actual performance when you're gaming, they're almost identical, even down to the settings that they both allow to use. And by the way, the only game that I've tested that made the X20 kind of struggle to keep a very stable frame rate was Genshin Impact. But guess what? The 8.3 suffered from exactly the same problem. So let's put things in perspective. Let's say the Snapdragon 888, which is the top of the line, best CPU currently available, will give you a 10 out of 10 performance. The 870, which is right under the 888, should give you about a 9.5 out of 10 performance. The 750G and the 765, which are almost identical, will give you about a 9 performance. And the 480 on its current configuration on the X20 will give you about an 8 out of 10 performance. So it's not by any means slow. It's just not as fast as what you can get on something more powerful. But it's also notably faster than most of the Snapdragon 600 series processors that I've tested, including the 660, the 662, and the 665. And I mean notably, almost twice as fast. So if you have a practical concern about the performance, unless you're a very heavy gamer and you're spending a lot of time playing pretty much the heaviest most graphical intensive games on your phone, the Snapdragon 480 should be absolutely fine for your usage. Not just fine, actually, even more than fine. So you might be asking yourself, why did Nokia use the Snapdragon 480 and not the 720 or the 732G since it matches them in performance? And I think it's because Nokia Mobile is prioritizing 5G over other aspects. And sadly, both of those chipsets don't support 5G while the Snapdragon 480 does. So the company clearly sees 5G as a way to future-proof the device. The second very important aspect is the battery life. Now the XR20 is clearly aimed at people who live an active lifestyle. And one of the key aspects that I've noticed after using the X20 and the X10 is the clearly superior battery life compared to the 8.3 despite both of these devices having the almost exact same battery capacity. And I'm not talking about a small difference here. There's almost a 50% increase in battery life on the X20 compared to the 8.3. So in terms of numbers, I'm getting between eight and 10 hours of screen on time. And on the 8.3, I was managing about six max. And for somebody who wants to spend their time outdoors, I'm sure they'll appreciate that extra battery life over the slight improvement in gaming that the Snapdragon 750 or the 765 would provide. However, it's not all roses and butterflies for the 480. So the weakness that I've noticed that a regular consumer might face is the fact that the chipset just doesn't support 4K video recording. And this is really a shame because a phone like the XR20, which has some nice action-orientated camera features, 
would have been a very nice GoPro replacement or a device that can be used alongside a GoPro for somebody who lives an active lifestyle. And for people who wanna use it in such a way, sadly, you'll just have to settle for 1080p. At the end of the day, a phone isn't just a processor and it definitely isn't just a screen. It's a combination of so many different parts. And obviously, when you build a product like the XR20, which is a bit more niche than most devices that we actually look at these days, then you make certain compromises in order to provide better features in different aspects and keep the price at a reasonable level. So the XR20, if you compare it to rugged devices, is offering you a very nice set of features. But when you compare it to more mainstream devices, you might be sacrificing a bit of performance in order to take advantage of the extra durability and some of the extra features that you'll definitely find. Now, whether you'd prefer something more mainstream, the XR20 or something more rugged is completely up to you. But at the same time, comparing between the Nokia XR20 and a more mainstream device like the Nord 2 or the Poco X3 GT is like comparing between a Land Rover Defender, which is the XR20, suitable for specific things like off-roading, being rugged, carrying seven people and offering something practical, and a light sports car that's aimed at giving you the best performance and lap times for the money, like the Nord 2 or the Poco X3 GT. I just don't see a lot of people cross-shopping between these two really. But the very fact that the XR20 is slim enough and looks good enough and feature-packed enough to be compared to a more mainstream device is on itself a big win for Nokia Mobile, in my opinion. Because it definitely means that they've succeeded in creating a super rugged device that might also have a more mainstream appeal. Anyways, that's it for me. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please don't forget to share, like, and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.